So I'm a technical program manager of the private sector program at NCSA. I'm also uh, uh, affiliated with the mechanical science engineering department at the University of Illinois. Um, so uh, w as you look at the landscape of the PREX nowadays, you know, you can see that uh, most of them are really about something small, quantum mechanics, uh, molecular dynamics, and also something really big like Cosmos, you know, and all those things. Something in between you don't see very often. So uh, there is some uh, conception, you know, that uh, we at Finite Element and CFD, we have pretty much sold everything. We don't need supercomputers. So with regard to that, actually, I I'm going to quote uh, what uh, uh, Professor Hughes from Texas said. You know, I was a grad student at that time, 2003. He said, you know, when the supercomputer becomes the size of the football field, they'll be still too small and, and uh, too slow for some problems. And Yeah. So now, you know, as Blue Water is the size of the football field, one would think, you know, you guys are fine. Well, look at this now. <laughs> so look, uh, I was actually last year in Leipzig in an ISC, and uh, one of our good partners, you know, from Rolls-Royce, uh, Dr. Yun Ho, he said, you know, this is my dream. He said, you know, uh, one trillion degrees of freedom, uh, one billion core hours, you know, for the calculation of the whole engine. Um, here's another one. So this one is Professor uh, Igor Bolotnov. I was at the Seattle HPC User Forum, and he said, you know, my dream is actually to do the DNS approach, you know, doing the direct uh, numerical simulation of the multi-phase flow in a whole nuclear reactor core. And the uh, idea is actually this might be achieved by 2060. Uh, so I'm not going to spend much time, but he said, you know, he would need a mesh of 40,000 trillion elements. and uh, should run up to 320 billion cores and uh, would solve really big problem of 13.6 bubbles, an average of 1% of the void. And remember, you know, our good friend or our enemy is actually Reynolds numbers. So, so for the real number uh, of 5,000, which is realistic here, you know, the, the, the number of grid points is actually a pretty steep function, an exponential function of the Re Reynolds number. Uh, let's, so let's say a few words about our private, private sector program in NCSA. You guys know about NCSA, all of you. Uh, we are actually becoming increasingly famous because of our private sector program. Um, um, many, many companies that I'm going to show on the uh, next fly, uh, slide are actually coming uh, to uh, solve their, our, uh, their most demanding HPC challenges, you know, uh, companies from pretty much all, all sectors of the private sector. and. Uh, uh, I checked this actually uh, worldwide. We are the largest HPC industrial engagement right now. Um, and uh, the, the list, here's the list, you know, this was our bedrock, you know, we were always in, in involved with the big manufacturing companies. Uh, but uh, lately we actually started uh, uh, increasing our portfolio. You can see oil and gas here, you can see uh, life sciences, and you can see the technological sector here, you know, becoming very strong. And uh, lately we actually started uh, becoming partners also with uh, different uh, institutes and uh, uh, institutions, you know. Um, so now let, let's talk about uh, industrial applications, breakthroughs on blue waters. Um, so everything started in 2013 when we broke uh, 15,000 uh, world record with the LS Dyna uh, commercial FEA explicit code. And then we uh, very lately, actually a few days ago, uh, we also broke uh, 100,000 cores with the Star CCM. Uh, for you guys who are CFD, you know, you know, Star CCM, one of the major uh, commercial uh, CFD codes. Um, and then uh, their uh, uh, big opponent, their, their competitor, NC is fluent. You know, we are about 36,000 cores. You know, they are becoming jealous. I'm pretty sure we're going to reach 100,000 with them too. Um, WSMP is a direct solver. Um, um, very important, you know, if you're having ill-conditioned problems, we are about 65,000 cores right now with them. And then we also have an accelerated version of WSMP, and we are about 500 XK7 nodes right now on Blue Waters with that solver. Um, um, what gave us a uh, top supercomputing achievement award last year at SC was actually this work with Alia, which is a code from uh, Barcelona Supercomputing Center, also FEA code, where we actually broke 100,000 cores too with that code. Um, I don't have time to talk much about all of these successes, but uh, I'm going to just briefly touch to each of them uh, um, 
let's see how I'm doing. Uh, okay, so I'm doing fine, explicit finite element, LS Dyna. Uh, for this kind of collaboration with uh, um, commercial code, actually, they are, here are the four very important ingredients, you know, for success for this recipe. So, of course, uh, you have a Cray, uh, and we have a very good relationship with their segment, uh, manufacturing segment guys, you know, who know about all the bits of the uh, machine itself. And then LSTC, uh, Bob Lucas is here, you know, who is representing LSTC. So we have a really good uh, relationship with LSTC, and they know the code better than anybody else. And of course, we have our private partner uh, companies, which are bringing the real world engineering problems, not the problems, you know, from standard benchmark of the ISV. So in this case, this was Procter & Gamble and Rolls-Royce. And of course, NCSA, private sector program, where I'm managing, actually we have about five, six people in my group, mostly in PhDs. We know the science, we know the domain, we know also the HPC. And once you put all those four ingredients, you, know, you can pretty much uh, be very successful, like we were here with LS Dyna. Again, this is the real geometry, real load boundary conditions, and uh, uh, also, you know, coupled with the uh, very difficult eroding contact conditions. Uh, and uh, LS Dyna was ported uh, to uh, Blue Waters in 2013, and uh, you know, particularly uh, good part is Gemini actually, once we uh, are in a domain where communication is much more important than computation in Gemini, it really makes a big difference. Uh, so here's that uh, scaling that we broke, uh, I think it was January 2014. Uh, this was the largest, it's still I think highest known scaling of any ISV FEA code, commercial FEA code. Uh, we pretty much stopped on 15,000 uh, cores and uh, the, the problem size was, uh, um, uh, if I remember, yeah, 27 million uh, nodes. This was actually from Procter & Gamble. They provided this one. And uh, what it means is actually from 400 days on an uh, imaginary uh, serial computer, actually we can solve this in 4.3 hours now on 15,000 cores. Um, so this is uh, one that I mentioned just a few days ago. You know, my colleague, uh, Dr. Ahmed Taha, who is actually in charge for the CFD operations at NCSA, he worked with the Star CCM, uh, with, with CD Adapco and their flagship code, Star CCM. He actually broke uh, on 100,000 cores right now, you know, with uh, 76,000 speed up, which bring us to uh, efficiency about, of, of about 75%. Um, so, um, this is a, a benchmark provided by the ISV. Actually, uh, they are uh, doing lots of business with Formula One in uh, Europe. So this was actually an aerodynamics problem with, uh, about uh, turbulent flow around uh, uh, one of the bolides. Uh, they don't say which one, but we can pretty much guess, you know, because who is the winner right now in Formula One? And that was actually in Le Mans. So uh, very big problem size, you know, almost one billion uh, nodes, you know, and we, we scaled pretty much to uh, 100,000 cores. Um, so now let's talk about Alia. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, this one actually landed us top person supercomputing achievement award last year. Um, what is specific with Alia is actually all of these codes that I mentioned, uh, LS Dyna or Star CCM, they all have a serial heritage. Why Alia actually was. Uh, uh, started actually having very HPC machines in mind, and that makes a big difference, you know. So uh, it's also mostly uh, uh, they have uh, all kinds of uh, uh, discretization right now, explicit and implicit. Uh, but uh, when you come to explicit integration, uh, uh, it's mostly actually doing iterative solar with pro uh, conjugate gradients. Um, and various uh, preconditioning techniques. We are actually uh, having idea to plug this uh, powerful direct solver WSMP into Alia and see you know, how we can actually scale some uh, very ill-conditioned problems. Um, what is good with Alia is actually it's a, it's a staggered multi-physics, so highly modular. You know, so you are actually combining the different multi-physics uh, uh, physicists actually on a MPI run, uh, run lunch line or EP, EP run lunch line, you know, with each module representing different physics and easy really to combine them on, on, on a job lunch. Uh, it's ported in, uh, to Blue Wars in 2014, and uh, we solved actually along the way two uh, interesting problems. One is uh, human heart. Uh, I show you actually uh, what commercial code has done on FEA CFD, you know, and on CFD right now we approach one billion elements. Here you can see actually we 
uh, last year with this code actually um, have much bigger problem sizes. So we have 3.4 billion elements. We have uh, 4.22 billion elements for the CFD problem. This one is for the uh, human heart actually, uh, which is a uh, nonlinear solid mechanics coupled with the uh, electrical propagation. And here, in terms of multi-physics, it's a transient incompressible turbulent flow in a kiln furnace, very industrial problem coupled with energy and combustion. Um, I'm gonna show you one benchmark uh, you can see actually uh, for this kiln furnace with 4.22 billion elements uh, with this transient incompressible uh, turbulent flow, uh, I believe the, the turbulent constitutive model is actually was LES uh, and coupled with energy and combustion, we actually scaled 200,000 cores with almost 90% efficiency, uh, which is very good. And uh, just to put you in perspective, that means actually uh, on imaginary serial uh, computer, serial, serial core computer, you know, if we have so much memory, it will take almost 18 years, 17.4 years, you know, what we have sold on Blue Waters uh, in less than two hours, you know. So again, the major ingredient here is the Gemini, because Gemini, once, once we really started scaling this very wide, you know, Gemini makes, makes a lot, lot, of, lot of difference here. Um, let's talk quickly about uh, uh, these uh, direct solvers. Uh, I'm talking about so implicit finite element code uh, uses lots of time to solve these problems. Uh, traditionally, uh, we were teaching kids, you know, iterative solvers are good. Direct solvers cannot scale very well. Now, uh, let's look at the sparse direct multi-frontal algorithm from Watson, IBM, same guys who be Jeopardy. Um, it's um, highly robust, uh, but of course, memory expensive like any other direct solver, but perfect for. Uh, you know, this kind of exploratory projects on blue waters. Uh, it does LU decomposition. Of course, you know, you're introducing fill-ins. That's where the memory is, uh, demand is coming from. And, uh, you know, once you do proper stuff, actually you, you, are, you are introduced with the opportunity to do the uh, dense matrix operations. And here are the uh, FEA problems that we extracted from the commercial finite element package. They are all big. One, this one, M11, is actually have very ill condition number, you know, so almost insolvable by iterative solvers. And here's that benchmark, you can see, you know, we scaled the largest problem size to 65,000 cores, uh, very good scaling, you know. So this uh, giving us hope, actually, in the future, that uh, FEA will scale really wide. Um, so here's another domain. This is actually from oil and gas. This was in collaboration with uh, Barcelona Supercomputing Center again. Uh, their big, big uh, oil and gas partner is Repsol, so they provided a matrices uh, from their inversion problem when they are looking for the oil. They have to solve this inversion problem by solving uh, uh, Maxwell equations. And they also introduce uh, very large problems, you know, sparse problems, and the iterative solvers are not doing very well there, you know. So direct solvers is the only way to do this efficiently. And of course, you know, unlike FEA, they, they are actually in complex, complex domain. And you can see the benchmark here, you know, we exceeded actually FEA. Uh, we scaled to 64,000 uh, and uh, we achieved actually more performance. Uh, unfortunately, I'm missing that part, but we actually s uh, achieved almost 100,000 teraflops, which is a very good result for uh, sparse uh, linear algebra. So we went one, one step further working with IBM and NVIDIA now. We actually ported the WSMP to XK7 nodes of Blue Waters. Uh, we are basically, we call this minimally invasive approach. We are intercepting blast level three calls with large dimensions and actually sending them to uh, blast, uh, to CUDA blast. And we also use peanuts uh, buffers to increase the copy uh, uh, through the uh, PCI and, they, and enable some kind of asynchronous uh, memory copies and uh, kind of uh, uh, hiding the latencies. Um, and here's that benchmark you can see, you know, that uh, um, on a smaller number of nodes, which is actually, if, if you look nowadays in the commercial codes like Abacus and Ansys, you know, the, uh, with GPU acceleration, they only scale to few of these uh, nodes, you know, on multinodal uh, approach with GPUs. And uh, what we have achieved right away is actually on 32 or 64 nodes and 128, you pretty much got the double performance with GPU acceleration for, for this. And of course, you know, as you go wider, actually uh, 
these things are asymptotically approaching the CPU. And we pretty much have idea why is this happening, you know. The wider uh, scale acceleration on GPUs is uh, uh, kind of slowed down because the larger block size on GPU that we are sending right now and we don't have uh, as much as, uh, uh, you know, freedom to do that like uh, IBM is doing on, on a CPUs. And of course, limited PCR communication between GPU and CPU with uh, uh, Gen 2 generation that's uh, right now on XK7 nodes. However, uh, we are also actively working on improvements now. Uh, we are uh, sending different size adjustments, you know, to improve the work and we also trying to hide uh, uh, these PCI uh, latencies and of course we will apply GPU aware MPI because all of the MPI traffic is going through PCIe and then, you know, all of these MPI buffers are actually sitting on the whole side of, 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 of this. So I think uh, this would be my last slide, you know, uh, again, you know, private sector program at NCSA, our core mission is actually to help, uh, to help our partner companies, you know, to get competitive edge, especially on uh, this very competitive global market. Um, as far as Blue Waters goes, you know, we are more than happy with Blue Waters and all of our partners too, you know. Um, I think Pro Blue Waters actually with all of these awards that we get uh, really proved itself, you know, that it's capable to solve the most challenging problems from industry too, not only from academia. Um, uh, f both from, you know, multi-physics but also from geophysics problems, you know, in oil and gas. And uh, why is this work important? Well, uh, if you look, you know, the the computing used in a cutting edge HPC like Blue Waters no, right now is actually about approximately five years ahead of the that used by the leading uh, industrial adopters. So when you look at the BP, for example, having the largest HPC uh, system right now in the world, it's not much behind uh, Blue Waters at all. And I, I think soon it's going to be the same. So it's really true. So, you know, uh, whatever we do now, you know, industry is pursuing this, you know, and it's going to be an industry five years from now. Um, many, many companies and uh, individuals actually helped uh, with all of these successes, you know. Of course, the Blue Waters project, you know, uh, particularly, and then, of course, our hardware vendor, uh, Cray, and their manufacturing uh, sector, and then our dear uh, industrial companies, Rolls-Royce, Procter & Gamble, Caterpillar, Ansys, and then, uh, you know, LST, CIB, and Watson, NVIDIA, Barcelona Supercomputing Center that we have really good connection with on uh, international uh, and, and other partners, you know, which actually is worth to stay under NDA. I think that will be my last one. Okay. Thank you, Sid. <laughs> so we have probably time for maybe one or two quick questions while we, we can switch over speakers. No questions? So I have one. Uh, do you have any data from uh, <coughs> Cray on any newer computing, like the XC system that you can share? Is there? I was I was trying very hard to get the, uh, some account, uh, especially through our friends from uh, manufacturing sector, and they promised me actually to get me some. Uh, so uh, I was particularly interested, you know, how their Aries is actually performing versus Gemini, and they said. Uh, um, they didn't say uh, how much is faster Gemini for these kind of problems, but they said I will be pleasantly surprised. So that's all I know right now. Okay. Well, um, yeah, we're always looking forward to hear how the newer systems are. Yeah. <laughs>